everyone. It's my great pleasure to present our recent work about the light emitting devices based on 2D semiconductors. I'm Junyong Wang from National University of Singapore. The work are done in Professor Goki Ada's lab and the Center for Advanced 2D Materials in National University of Singapore. 2D materials has attracted general interest in the past two decades. Here, I will not uh, uh, spend too much time on the broad introduction, but uh, hope to emphasize two points. The first one is that uh, these 2D families consist of a, a variety of different materials with different uh, properties, from the semi-metallic graphene, uh, insulating he uh, hexagonal boronitride, and the semiconducting transition metal dicoxinides, and so on and so forth. The second uh, point is that uh, these uh, 2D materials with different properties can be stacked together to form the so-called Van der Waals heterostructures, just like the quantum wells in traditional semiconductors. However, for the 2D case, uh, there is no bungling, uh, dangling band of the different layers, so there is no uh, limitation from the lattice mismatch. And here, we will narrow down our focus onto the photonic devices and uh, especially for the light emission devices from the Van der Waals heterostructures. Group 6 transition metal dicoxinides is a, a suitable candidate for the light emitting devices, partially because it have a very interesting property uh, uh, electronic band structure evolution from the indirect band gap to direct when it's sent down to monolayer. So as we can see from the figure, the quantum yield for a monolayer is much larger uh, than the uh, thick layers. So this offers us the opportunity to build uh, uh, light emission devices based on only one atomically thin semiconductors. The optical properties of the 2D semiconductors are dominated by the 2D exit, uh, the electron hole pairs. And this exciton itself in the 2D system is in highly selective uh, uh, circular polarized light emission, the uh, exciton polariton states, or lasing states or quantum emitter states. So um, most of the case, we try to generate the excitons by optical pumping. Uh, for example, in photoluminescence spectra, we use a, a photon to excite the electron hole pairs. On the other hand, another approach, which is the carrier injection, is also significant for the uh, investment of the excitons, especially for device uh, integrations. Different approaches have been proposed to fabricate the uh, electro trigger, uh, tri trigger the uh, exciton devices. For example, uh, a very simple device is the pin junction, for example, a lateral pin junction by local gates. Um, in this device, uh, when forward bias is applied, there will be a recombination of electron and the holes in the uh, pin junction area, and there will be light emission. However, the light emission in these devices are typically limited in the junction area, so it's not uh, 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 the, the emission area is spatially confined. Planar emission is important for uh, the uh, uh, real applications. Uh, quantum wave structures has been proposed to uh, uh, achieve the planar emission. For example, uh, a thin layer HBN can be used to encapsulate the semiconductor monolayer and inject the electron in the holes simultaneously to the semiconductors. Uh, however, for this type of device, typically the HBN thickness uh, was chosen to be quite thin, and uh, the confinement effect to the carriers in the semiconductor is limited. So uh, that renders a large liquid current, liquid current in the uh, devices. So in this in this talk, I will focus on the structure of the MIS structure, uh, uh, consisting of uh, metallic insulating and semiconductor layers. In these devices, we achieved the planar emission, and uh, uh, we expect that the uh, working mechanism will be unipolar carrier injections. So now I move to the first uh, uh, work, which we focus on the monolayer tungsten disulfide. Uh, in this work, we achieved the light emission and a very high efficient conversion of carriers to excitons in the semiconductors. Um, 
monolayer WIC2 is a naturally undoped uh, semiconductor, and the doping level can be further tuned by a simple back gate from this VG. And uh, mm, so this monolayer WS2 is uh, electron accumulated. So to generate the exciton, we need to inject uh, the minus, the holes here. So we need a hole reservoir and a tunneling layer for holes as well as the blocking layers. So we choose the uh, filial graphene as a hole reservoir to offer holes uh, for WS2 and the HBN layer to uh, work as the hole tunneling layer and the electron blocking layers. The HBN thickness has been selected to be uh, quite thick around the three to five nanometers to have a, a high confinement effect to the carriers in semiconductor. What we expect is that uh, when we apply a bias to filial graphene, holes could have a possibility to tunnel through the HBN and uh, the tunneled holes could, uh, could uh, combine with uh, electrons and form excitons and some of them will radically recomb recombine. So we can detect the EL from the devices. Firstly, we see the IV characters of the device. Uh, as we can see, when we apply a positive bias, uh, the current will be the on state. And uh, these currents are, uh, depends on the, both the uh, bias voltage as well as the uh, heat voltages. Interestingly, when we, uh, we found that uh, when the current is larger than the threshold current, uh, there will be detectable EL immediately. Note that uh, this current is only uh, is below nano ampere. So this means that uh, uh, we have a very high efficiency to convert the injected carrier to exciton formations. So this this picture shows the device, one of our device, and the red line is the contour of the stacked uh, overlapped area, and we can see the emission is planar from the uh, right image. And here I would like to show a video to show that uh, the uh, LED can be turned on and turned off by control the bias. And we can see in the current level of 100 uh, nano ampere, uh, the device can achieve a quite brightness, quite high brightness. So, to further investigate on the quantum efficiency of the device, we compare the EL external quantum efficiency to the PL quantum yield. Uh, we can regard the EL process to be a two process. First one is to convert the injected carrier to exciton. The second process is the exciton has the possibility to recombine and emit light. And the second process is heavily depends on the uh, material quality depends on the exciton radiative lifetime in the 2D semiconductors. The conclusion here is that we found the quantum efficiency for EL and PL are in a similar level, which means that uh, the first process, the carrier to exciton conversion efficiency is very high in our devices. So the efficiency are only limited to the quantum yield, intrinsic quantum yield of the monolayer samples. To further verify our conductive mechanism, we uh, measure the temperature dependent uh, uh, conductive uh, uh, curve of the uh, flakes with, of the sa samples with different uh, HBN thickness. Uh, firstly, we found that uh, the IV curve is temperature independent, which uh, consistent with uh, tunneling, uh, re tunneling behavior of the uh, conductance. Secondly, we found that uh, uh, in the in the high bias regime, the uh, the IV curve can be fitted well by the follow Noham tunneling function, and uh, from the fitting we can extract uh, uh, we can extract uh, the energy barrier of the of the holes, uh, and the slope is also depends on the thickness of the boron nitride. So all this evidence uh, verifies the. Uh, proposed uh, tunneling mechanism uh, for this device that the hot hose, the hose has tunneled through the triangular barrier from boron nitride and become hot hose 
and this holds uh, find the electrons to uh, form exciton. And here, in fact, it's trying to emit light. OK, next, uh, I will talk about uh, another uh, topic that we achieved the charged exciton emission from 2D tungsten diselenite. Trions are uh, bonded, uh, are excitons bond additional uh, additional charge. Uh, it can be uh, either electron or hole. So if the if the trion consists of two holes and one electron is positive trion, or it consists of two electrons and one hole is uh, is negative trion. So uh, the trion emission can be uh, can be detected uh, through the photoluminescence if we tune the uh, doping level of the monolayers. For example, by just a, a simple uh, backgate, we can uh, achieve the redistribution of the uh, oscillator strength from neutral exciton to negative trion, uh, which is in the positive gate, and the positive trion, which is in the negative gate. The sample is in p-doped region. However, uh, uh, to, uh, to achieve the trion separately and in a controllable manner, electrically is still challenging. So to achieve this problem, we uh, we first choose the monolayer tungsten diselenide as a, as a material because it, uh, it, it has both electron and the whole accumulation states. So we can control the post, uh, positive trion and the negative trion uh, conditions. And then we fabricated the MIS device but here we use a graphene contact to the tungsten diselenide. And we also put the MIS in encapsulated into boron nitride to improve the device stability. So this one shows one typical figure of the device. The, the red line is monolayer WSE2, the purple line is top filler graphene, and this white line is a tunneling HBN. So the active area will be this triangular. Uh, shadow the area. Firstly, we uh, check the IV characteristics of the device. We found that in most of the case, the re, uh, the device is in a high resistance uh, condition. But in the positive gate and the positive bias condition, or in negative gate and negative bias condition, there is current. So this is understandable, similar to the WS2 device, but the only difference is that we have a uh, uh, we have another conductive branch in the negative gate and negative bias. So the next question will be, uh, can we can we see the emission, light emission from the two conductive region? So the answer is that uh, indeed we see light emission in both these two regimes, and the emission is planar as shown from these figures. To further investigate on the um, uh, on the origin of the emission. We systematically investigate on the uh, gate dependent and the bias dependent PL and compare the, them with the EL. So, for example, in the zero bias condition, the PL is dominated by neutral exciton. But the uh, when we apply bias and the gate, the PL will dominate by either positive trion or negative trion. And the e EL. Uh, EL happens when the uh, monolayer WSC2 is in heavily doped regime. So this EL at the positive gate corresponds with the uh, negative trion, and this EL and the negative at the negative gate corresponds with positive trion. So uh, this is the mechanism we proposed for the light emission and the trion formation process. Uh, for example, in the positive gate condition, WSC2 is heavily undoped. And the holes uh, and the filial graphene is uh, p-doped by the buyers. So after threshold, the holes from filial graphene has a possibility to tunnel through the boron nitride and uh, uh, find the excitons in the WSE2 and uh, form negative trion. This is similar for the uh, positive trion formation process. Interestingly, we found that uh, for negative trion, there is a, a hot trion emission corresponds with the um, uh, valence band splitting due to spin orbit coupling. And this, uh, this is because there is a possibility that uh, the high energetic holes could recombine with the electrons. However, for the 
a positive trial condition, there is no such hot holes, so we can only see, see a single peak. So in the last part of the EL devices, I would like to mention that for some of the 2D semiconductors with a reduced uh, implant symmetry, uh, for example, in, uh, in the uh, Sendai uranium disulfide, excitons will behave quasi one dimensional. So they have a pref preferred uh, dipole orientation. So for this type of uh, 2D materials, we, we, uh, we fabricated devices and achieved the light emission from, uh, from the excitons. And we found the emission is highly linear polarized. And they, as can be seen from this figure, they, uh, the two excitons show different uh, dipole uh, direction. So th this gave us the prom promise that uh, the uh, 2D semiconductor with uh, reduced implant symmetry have the promise to use the, as a on chip um, polarized light emitter. Lastly, I would like to uh, mention that uh, we can uh, to improve the device performance and uh, uh, to characterize the device, we can use the scanning probe microscope technique to uh, to improve the device. So firstly, when we do the transfer, sometimes we uh, it's not avoidable to uh, find some bubbles or contaminations in the heterostructure regime, which can be seen that uh, it blocks the light from the device. So um, it's, uh, it's found that uh, um, if we use the uh, um, AFM tip to uh, to uh, scan the sample. Uh, for example, this red square is scanned area, and the contamination can be removed if we adjust the parameters carefully. So this is the so-called nano switch technique. Another problem we uh, usually see in this device is that uh, the tunneling uh, of the HPN is is planned emission, but uh, sometimes it's not uniform. So I. Uh, I think uh, if we use the conductive AFM to investigate on the local conductance of 2D materials, it will be helpful for the devices. For example, this figure shows the conductive AFM uh, on the uh, HP in flakes. Uh, I will skip the summary. And uh, lastly, I, I would like to thank Professor Koki Eda and uh, my colleagues in, in the lab, and also thank the Center for Advanced 2D Materials for the support. And uh, thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.